We are joined right now by my friend and former colleague, former MSNBC host, Chris Matthews. Um, as this story was shaping up, I said, you know who I'd really like to talk to? I'd really like to know what Chris Matthews thinks of all this. I, 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 yeah. would, guess, I would guess that it's a little sad, but also not super surprising as, as a student of these, of these figures and these characters. Tell me what you thought as you watched this go down. Yeah, yeah, the, the Speaker of the House is a constitutional office, as you must have mentioned by now. It's not like majority leader of the Senate. It's part of the Constitution. The first thing, he's in line to be a president, right after the vice president. If a situation is developed like that, extraordinary situations, to take it down a leader is unimaginable. It's remarkable. You, a, a speaker sta sort of stands above the crowd. He's, he's responsible to both parties. Anybody can go into his office and speak to him and, and treat him as the Speaker of the House. And so it's not just another political job, and it's not just a hack's job, I can tell you. It's a job for a leader, somebody who can pull their party caucus with them. And I think sometimes it's easier if you're on the left in the Democratic Party like Pelosi, or if you're Schumer. Somehow, if you're from one of the coasts, it may be de better for you because you're one of the people that might cause trouble in terms of leadership. Uh, I think uh, Pelosi can talk to AOC, for example, uh, you know, the president, of course, uh, Biden can talk to Bernie uh, Sanders. Uh, they can talk to each other. It's not like they're from extreme differences. It's hard for somebody in a McCarthy situation who doesn't have a clear ideology that's recognizable. He doesn't seem to represent the, 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 the heart and soul of the Republican Party as it is today, which is mainly MAGA, but not all MAGA. Uh, there's a lot of quiet conversations that go on. You're not really MAGA in many cases, so people may be hoping for the future when it arrives. But it's remarkable because the speaker, you know, the idea that you could bring him down with one vote is extraordinary. That condition that uh, McCarthy had to set to become speaker is probably the problem, to allow yourself open to just one malcontent, basically. And this guy apparently has a grudge, and he's operating on his grudge, which there's always somebody that's unhappy. And I guess I guess uh, Matt Gates is the one who's unhappy right now. You know, Jake Sherman um, tweeted that for the last 12 years, members of the Republican um, House conference have been at war with their leader. And, and that made me think, and, and you covered a lot of this era, too. I mean, Boehner yeah. um, was pushed out by the extreme in, in his caucus, uh, Paul Ryan. I mean, it is sort of the, the mod. It's not a new news story. It just yeah. seems that they're going to new lengths to punish their leaders. What's the natural extension? What happens next? Well, what came, what came before with Boehner, we always thought, watching it as a journalist, I was watching him uh, leave the, the White House. He had made a deal with the president. And you get the sense that his chief of staff had just called him and said, we, we are going to have problems with that. I can already hear the problem, the racket about that. There's going to be objection. You can't pull that deal off. So he couldn't deliver. And I think that was one of the reasons he and the other guys left. They couldn't deliver. But I got to go back to what the Democrats were not always the same party like they look like today, like under Hakeem Jeffries. They're not, they're basically, once the South turned against white Southerners, uh, Democrats, I should say, and once they were ran, ran out of the South largely, with some exceptions like Georgia, uh, they were basically a homogeneous party. Uh, that's why they didn't have people that, like the 70 to, down to 40, but sometimes it was 70 conservative and moderate uh, Democrats who opposed Tip O'Neill. But they would end up gradually going along with them in the end. But they were there, and they were very conservative. They liked things like Social Security, but they didn't like a lot of the Democratic Party program. And that went on until the Civil Rights Bill really had its full effect from 64 on. And finally, after a while, Lyndon Johnson's prediction that the party would lose the South came true. But after that sort of long-term disagreement, the Democratic Party is pretty similar to, to each other. The big city people aren't that different from the suburban people. Um, I'm surprised in this vote that why didn't Brian Fitzpatrick of, of, of Bucks County, which is not a wild right wing uh, county, why would he vote with the leadership against the leadership here? I, some of these people are going to be, I think, was confronted by more moderate Republicans to say, "Are you that MAGA that you had to vote this way? Yeah. Or, or why did you have to go with Gates? I, I don't see Gates as a leader, naturally. Uh, and I don't think he is a leader. He's a malcontent." Uh, but you know now they got to pick a leader. They got to come up with two eighteen for a leader. They have to. That's the deal, Nicole. As we all know, it all comes down to two hundred seventy electoral votes to be president, and two hundred eighteen votes to get something through the House, and sometimes sixty votes to get anything regular through the Senate. 
and they're going to need 218 for the next person. And uh, this is going to be one raggedy job. Not um, a, not because the guy will demand the same one vote. The one vote, you're right. out of here. What vote they they can, and you're gone. You know. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's, no, it's no way to run a rodeo. I've got all these numbers written down um, because it does, you know, the math becomes a big part of the story. Um, as we watch this unfold, I hope we can continue to call on you, my friend. No one knows more about that building than you. Well, I'm, I'm not enjoying this. I like leadership. I think the Republican Party has turned on a lot of institutions. Like, you know, this is the Vivek Ramaswamy. He's against every institution, the FBI, yes. everybody, the IRS, everybody. Now they've turned on their own actual leadership. They have brought down the House. This is an extraordinary thing. They have brought down the House in the way Newt Gingrich brought down the Democrats. They're bringing down their own party. It's extraordinary. It really their is. Their leadership is gone. <laughs>